Hey guys, what's going on and uh, welcome to our review of Mario Kart Wii. So remember, uh, I said this in uh, another Nintendo related one, that we're not only reviewing uh, like small indie games, we're reviewing all types of games that we've done on the channel because all games, like I think someone said this in the comments, all games need uh, critiquing whether it be uh, from like AAA places or just from small indie game developers. Um, although small indie game developers seem to care a little bit more about your opinions. Um, anyway, uh, so. We are with uh, Mario Kart Wii. Now, if you watch the series, you probably know our resentment, or at least mine is most resentment of it. Zach keeps getting lucky, and so he obviously didn't mind it too much. Hey, he I, literally, he literally really looks me fun. in the eye. He literally can't look me in the eye and say that all of his wins were BS. Nah, I, it was pure Mario Kart. Skill. No, it wasn't skill. pure skill. No. Anyway, um, so we're gonna start with the game company slash creator. Ah, uh, obviously Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo makes a lot of games. I don't think I really need to go over them too much. It's kind of like if we did a game on Sony or uh, Microsoft. Those are big companies I don't think you need closure on. So we're going to skip over them for now. Moving on to what is done well. Um, remember that this game was made a long time ago. I don't want to go over the graphics too much because the graphics is its own section later. Um, what I do think is done well is the whole like... I, I liked the most control most controls in a way where like they weren't super sensitive or they were like they, they were kind of sensitive but they weren't overly sensitive and I also liked that you had back in the day you had time trials versus and battles and so the time trials for example they kind of took away for a little bit I think they're back in eight but I can't remember yeah, they are. Um, I didn't ask for confirmation and um, their uh, uh, versus has that the way they changed the way that worked um, but you can't really set too much custom rules anymore, especially in 8, you can only really send, like, the items you get, and the CPU difficulty, and the map, and that's about it. But, like, it's still pretty cool, and then the battle, the OG and stuff, they took away coin battle, I'm not sure why that was a thing, not, not we, but the, later they took it away. So I did, I did, coin battle was always one of my favorite, I actually preferred it over bloom battle, because bloom battle was kind of eh for me. Uh, but coin battle was super fun, and all the battle courses were pretty good too. Uh, there were a couple like repeats like Mario Battle Course 3 or whatever. Um, but that was pretty cool. They had a huge selection of characters. Now obviously in our playthrough, we were playing on a new Wii, sort of, that didn't have any really much stuff on it. So we didn't have Funky Kong, we didn't have all the other characters, um, and like that kind of stuff. We even didn't have like half of the middle roster, so... I mean, it's fine because we, we didn't need the middle roster anyway. It's always played as Peach. I always played as the Wing. And Zach plays the loser Luigi. The Lewis Luigi, sorry. Hey. Um, I, I think Rosalina is in this game as well. Uh, but you have to unlock her. So that's really the only person Isabel would play as. Um, so we really didn't even need that. But there's a huge selection of characters um, from the Mario series. So that was pretty done well. I liked the huge roster. Obviously, there's a bigger roster as you keep going throughout the games. But this one had a pretty good roster as well. Um, and it's OG as well. I think that the nostalgia comes is really brought forth in this. Anytime you hear the original Coconut Mall theme, you're like, oh yeah. That brings me back to the days. Because the first time I played this game was like when I was 9 or 10. Uh, Zach, or Isabel, I'm not even sure. No, she would have been born, but she was like not that old. Zach was like 2 years old, still annoying as he is today. Oh and um, and yeah, so it, it's it's all of it's pretty done well, I think. There's a couple things later that we'll get into that's not done well. Um, so, moving on to what could be improved. Um, like I said, the, the, con the most controls sometimes, uh, I would turn, like, the, the sensitivity wasn't too bad, but sometimes I would turn left and it made me go right, especially when drifting. It was usually when I was drifting. Um, and it, d it seemed a little inconsistent, so I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, and, uh... I do like that the time, like the, well, I said the time trials thing, but I think one of the problems with the time trials was you had to beat like the, the staff, like the staff that made the game's records. And I, there weren't, they weren't usually that hard, but I think there were a couple that were like, that's ridiculous. How am I meant to beat that? Um, and of course I think the, the Nintendo online thing doesn't work anymore because I don't think that it's supported anymore. Um, I'm not sure actually, it might be, I'm not sure, but I don't. There's not too many stuff. Mario Kart's always been frustrating, is the thing. Because there's always assembly. And this is for all the games. It's not just for Wii or whatever. In all Mario Kart games, there's a moment where at any point in the race, you could be screwed over and sent to last. 
And that always seemed unfair to me because it's like you had you had the skill to get all the way to first place and you had the skill to maintain it. And all it takes is one person getting lucky with one blue shell to chuck it at you and you get hit and sent to like tenth place. And it kind of makes your entire eff effort worth it. Or sorry, not worth it is what I meant to say. And it's just like, it's kind of unfair, but obviously I, I know why it's there. Um, so that's always been kind of frustrating, but I can't pin it on just Mark Are we? Although, apparently Mark Are we has a uh, stronger presence of blue shells. Like you have a higher chance. Um, so they decreased it a little bit to make it less frustrating. So I guess they, they changed it later in 8, but in this version they have a higher semblance of blue shells. And if you watch our series on it, you'll probably see a lot of blue shells. Um, so yeah, and like I said, that's that's always been the main problem with Mark Kirby, and I guess all of them, but Mark Kirby especially, is like, I, I would get in first and I'd be I'd ha be having a great time, and then all of a sudden, someone gets a blue shell, destroys me, and then I'm sent to 10th place. So that's always been a problem with Mark Kirby, but ever since I found out that Mark Kirby had a better, better semblance of blue shells, I was like, okay, so that's kind of the reason I kept getting slammed. Um... And it was also frustrating, again, it's, it's mainly the luck factor, I guess what I would say is kind of stupid. Um, because there would be times where Zach would be in first place for the entire race and not a single blue shell came at him. And I'm like, that's why I call all of his wins BS, because it's like, he didn't earn them, he got lucky. Whereas if you get hit by a blue shell and you're still in first, somehow, um, then you deserve to win. Because at that point, you're so far ahead that even a blue shell couldn't stop you, right? But if you're like just ahead, like Zach usually was, and... He didn't get either a didn't get hit by blue show at all um, Or not. I guess that's the only scenario, right? He didn't get hit by blue show at all It's kind of like really nothing hit him nothing nothing. No one got a blue shell from like I think you have to be a nine or not sorry Seventh and lower to get a blue show and it's like why did how did no one get a blue show in that entire race? And so the luck factor I think is a little baloney and uh, it's like I said the item the items in this game seem a little dumb the uh, Mark Red 8 fixes this again where it's like, there'd be times where I would be in like, this was Mark Kirby, right? Where I got a blue shell in first place. Yeah, it was this yeah. one. So stupid. That shouldn't have made any sense. Now, I slowed it down and I technically got the box in second. However, that doesn't matter because it can actually, it's, the item can change if you change places. And so if the, um, if I'm getting, uh, from moving from second to first, if it's still rolling like it is on screen, because that's why it takes a while to roll, because it's giving you a chance to catch up, right? And if you caught up like I did, in first place, it should have given me a banana, or I, I don't, can't remember coin during this one yet, um, a banana or something, right? But no, it gave me a blue shell, which shouldn't have even happened at all. So there's clearly a lot of things that's like, okay, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Why did that happen? Um, but you know, it's just high, kind of how it rolls, I guess. And the last thing I'll say is the um, item boxes disappear for a long time. So if you're right behind someone and they steal an item box and that's in front of you, you literally just don't get one. You don't get one until the next to the next one. And you'll have times because the computers can do this too. You have times where the, where you just don't get a box for like three rounds of the not the, not written like laps, but like three rounds of the boxes, right? And it I it happened to me a lot, and I got so frustrated because it's like, why are they disappearing so often? Uh, both Mario Kart Tour and Mario Kart 8 both fix that where it's kind of it's way shorter So if you're at least not right if you're not tailgating them, you can at least get a box um, But in this version they obviously they, they go away so, uh, They stay away for a long time So moving on to any problems or glitches <laughs> The only glitch I can think of is that stupid blue shell thing that literally I looked that up that shouldn't have happened <laughs> I don't know what happened there I just, uh, it decided to give me a blue show in first place. It's like, screw you, buddy. You're not, you're going to use it on yourself too. Because what else was I going to do? Hold it. Because like, if I got hit with a blue shell, like someone else had one, what was I going to do? Def like, def use my own blue shell <laughs> to destroy the blue shell? Um, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. So, I don't know. It was, uh, that's the only bug I can think of. I'm sure there's graphical glitches. I just probably didn't see them. Uh, I'm not too observant in that manner, but... Uh, I don't think so, not that I'm aware of. Moving on to controls. <laughs> controls are basically pure motion controls uh, with the Wiimote, uh, but you do you can drive with two or one, whatever it's toggled to. Uh, drifting is usually B or one, depending again, depending on what you have a toggle to. And I think that's it, obviously besides pause and stuff, but no one pauses the game. Why would you? Um, 
I think you can also have A button, either drift or go as well. So it, it depends on what they're toggled to, but usually it's driving and drifting. That's really it, because steering is obviously motion controls. <laughs> so, oh, using an item is uh, the D-pad, by the way. I forgot about that one. But moving on to graphics. <laughs> so, back in the day, I can't exactly remember what year this was. I should start looking up what, the, what year these were before I, we do these, but... Um, it was a long time ago, obviously, and I think for the time, again, Nintendo always has good-looking games that kind of stay good-looking, especially for, again, for nostalgia regions, um, and so it, it looks really good. Now, obviously, on our videos, they don't look that, they don't look as good because I have to zoom them in because the OBS doesn't like to capture them too well, um, but so that's, that's for any Wii games, like Mario Party, so they all look a little bit worse than they could, but even still, what we're seeing currently um, or like what we're seeing and what you guys would see if you played the game yourself, it looks pretty good for when it came out. So I would say definitely graphically it is pretty good. And of course it's, it's Nintendo, so they've always had a good graphics department. Uh, speaking of good departments, we have sound. The sound in this game is pretty iconic. Uh, you have the music, of course, from basically anything. Uh, all the tracks have really good music, of course. And then just the sound effects, all really good. I, I don't really think there's much I need to go over, because it's just really good. Um, that's why I never complained about it in the other sections, because I don't think there, I don't think I would change anything with the sound of music. I think it's all iconic. Even the starting, the main menu music is really good, too. So, But with that being said, uh, moving on to story and characters. Uh, story, there's none. It's a Mario Kart game. Uh, but the characters, I'm not going to go over all of them. It's just classic Mario characters. Uh, you have some weir weird ones mis mixed in there, like uh, Rosalina, Funky Kong. Funky Kong was a bit strange, but he's in here. Um, you, have, you can play as Miis, which I thought was interesting. Um, and I think that's really it. Well, that's for the funky ones. I, don't, I, I think the other ones are just kind of normal. Um, but yeah, story, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no story. I don't, there's no campaign or anything. Um, the story is you're driving, and your goal is to win. You're trying to become yep. a Great story! Closer. Great story. So, obviously, the, this game, though, isn't meant to have a story, so uh, that's why I didn't go over too much. Moving on to replayability. <laughs> now, if you've uh, listened to my reviews before, or I guess watched, technically, um, then you know that uh, I do this section in three different parts. The game is either limited, meaning if you play the game and it ends, it's kind of just over, you're not going to see anything new. The second is it's technically unlimited, or technically replayable, meaning you can replay it and get the same stuff, but it's, like, kind of repetitive after a while. And then the last one is truly unlimited, so think of a game like Minecraft, where every time you play the game, something different will happen. Um, you might think this game, on the surface, is a technical, uh, like, technically unlimited. However, I thought about it earlier today, and I think it actually is unlimited, because any time you do a race, there will be something different that will happen. Now, the course will be the same, and the characters you play as might be the same, and the items will obviously be the same, but the things that occur in the race itself will be different from every other race. So, maybe, for example, you're like me, gets a blue shell in first place. Can't say I've ever had that happen twice. So, it's technically unlimited because of the way that the race works, and this goes for any Mario Party, or Mario Party, yeah, this is Mario Party. Any Mario Kart game that exists out there. It's technically unlimited. And obviously, there's no story to play, and so that's why it kind of helps it be unlimited, so. Moving on to personal takes. Um, my personal take of this game is that it's a bit more frustrating than the other ones, just basically because of the... I think it's purely because of the items. I think that's the really thing that's bringing it down is the item distribution and the boxes itself. Because like I said earlier, they go away for a long time, and if you're right behind, and not if you're even not if you're right behind someone, if you're like a couple meters away from them, you're still not going to get it. And so, especially on higher CCs, by the way, I forgot to mention that if you're on like 150 or 200, if you're behind someone, you're not getting it. You got to go for a different box. Um, and so I think it's a bit more frustrating than most. And obviously, motion controls. I haven't really talked too much about motion controls. I'm fine with motion controls if they aren't garbage. In this game, they're not too bad. Um, I think it's just the item distribution is kind of terrible. I think they, I'm glad they fixed that in 8, but in this game, it's not that great. Um, and uh, so I, that's that's basically my thing. It's pretty good other than that, though. So I'll move to Zachary. Okay, so, I, so yeah, I definitely think that the item distribution, even though I haven't had too much of a problem with it, uh, 
could have been a bit better. Like, yeah, the item boxes really take a while to get back. Thankfully, they fixed that in games like 8 and 4. Uh, but yeah, it takes a while. And yeah, the item distribution is like getting blue shell first place. Either way, yeah, I just think that could have been better. Motion controls work too bad, I guess, and that's really about it for me. Alright, Isabel? Yeah, same thing what you guys said, the item distribution. Like, I think that should just be fixed, and like... Well, I feel like it was, this game was made in like 2005, it's not gonna be fixed. Yeah, but if it was better, then the game would be so much more, like, non frustrating but... But also, there, I feel like there's more luck than skill because, like, let's say Ethan's doing very good in, in first place and I'm in last place, or like, I'm in like, like seventh place, I get blue shell. Like, his, his progress is just ruined because of that. So I feel like there should just be like less luck and more skill. Alright. Um, moving on to Is It Worth It? Uh, it's a, uh, Wii game, meaning they're not making it anymore. Um, so it's probably on eBay or Amazon, probably not for a great price. I would say it's probably, it, it might be cheaper, I don't know, it's, it's a very beloved game, so it might be expensive. Um, it depends on the price. I would say if it's anything above 60, I would say probably not. I would spend your money elsewhere. Um, if it's something below 60, uh, then I would say sure. If you want to, or if you want to play a nostalgic game, or maybe if you never played Mario Kart Wii and you played the other ones, then sure, go ahead. But I would say even still, if it's over 60, I probably wouldn't waste your money on that. But buy a different game. Um, so in general, yes, because I probably expect it to be less than 60, unless you're looking at some eBay scalpers. But usually, it should be less than 60. Um, and I would say that yeah, sure, I would say it's worth it. And then of course that leads us to the final rating. <laughs> Um, been thinking about this obviously because like I said I I was purely harsh on the game just because of the like I said the whole item box thing um, but I can't group it with all the sevens that I've been handing out I'm not gonna compare it to Delta Room chapter 2 so I gotta go with the six um, I do not want them to be on the same level because they're not I don't I don't personally believe that Mario Kart Wii is as good as something like Delta Room. I don't I don't think it is um, and I think I get more I don't like games that frustrate me because if a game frustrates me, like for example, there, there's a reason you haven't seen Metroid Dread too often. That's because the first two times I played that game were so frustrating. I got so upset. And it also took us two hours to just record because it like we got stuck in so many parts. We didn't know where to go. The game wasn't clear. We'll finish the series because that's what the, the model of the channel is that we'll finish every series to do. Except for Luigi's Mansion. Um, and so we'll finish it. But that's like that's the one of the reasons you haven't been seeing it too often. Because I don't like games that frustrate me. Uh, Smash Bros. also has the same effect i don't like any type of fighting game i guess not just mess with purely um and so i i don't feel comfortable grouping it with other games that i would that i gave a seven um so i'm giving it a six so i'll go to zach though yeah i was i was thinking about like either six or seven and i was considering it giving it a seven but i think that was because of like my somewhat bias towards it because i got a little bit more uh, better results and not get crapped on more, uh, and I wasn't as frustrated, um, but I feel like if I played this enough and got screwed over, I definitely would have bumped my grade down, so I would- Well, and are you gonna compare it to Deltrune? That's the real question, because we gave Deltrune Chapter 2. We haven't done Chapter 1 yet because we did Chapter 2 before we even had the full idea of doing reviews. Um, but now that we're fully into it, we'll get to chapter one eventually. Well, because we're doing it in time. You'll notice that, like, you had Overcooked, then Kindergarten. It's all in time of when we d first started the series of the channel. So, we'll get to chapter one, but, like, that's what that's what it's all about. Are you going to compare it to t chapter two? Yeah, chapter two was written in nine, I believe. No, I think it was a seven. No. Oh, oh really? I think it was a seven. I think it was a seven. I can't remember, but I swear it was a seven. I can't remember what it was. Either way. Are you comparing it to the other games we've given a 7? Mm, that would be like Security Breach with other books. Um, I mean... Uh, oh, that's actually kind of hard. Um... Well, we'll move to Isabel, what do you think about it? Yeah, I was definitely like thinking a 6, because it's not that bad of a game to get 5, but... But, like, 
like, as you said, if I compare it to the other games, it, I don't think it should be at 7. So I'm gonna go with 6, too. Alright. Okay, I've thought about it. Um, I know we gave Kindergarten an 8, and that would make this game, like, just right, like, a little bit below it, and uh, I, I definitely wouldn't say that, so I'd probably give this a 6. Yeah, we have to, we're being brutally honest. That's the, that's the reason we're doing our reviews, is... For example, the only game I've given a 10 out of 10 is Undertale, and you'll see why um, if you actually go watch it. If you if you stick around for the hour long it took us to get to it. That was back in the old days of the reviews, the, the, not the good days, as some would say. The Dark Age. Um, the Dark Age, yeah. Um, but that's the only game I gave it a 10 out of 10 because literally it changed the world and it also what's wrong with it. You can't tell me a single thing. Um, unless you're biased towards the game because you hate the fan base, whatever. That's a, that's a personal problem, though. Um, but that's the only game I've given a 10 out of 10. The, the other, like, the professional reviewers, quote-unquote, they, they throw out 10s all the time. It's like, but a 10 is the highest you can get, which means it's perfect. That's like perfection. That's not, not, there's very few games. Like I said, in my mind, there's only one game, maybe two, which we'll get to eventually, but I'm not, I still have to think about that one, um, that are perfect, that, like, I could not change a single thing with. <laughs> but you're throwing out games, like, I think Mario, I think Mario, uh, uh, the Wii version of Mario Bros. What? Mario Bros. Wii or whatever. They gave that a 9 at one point. I'm like, mm. it's nowhere, no. No, let's, let's stop lying. Eight it's not, best. it's not an, I don't even know if I gave it an 8. Listen, we'll review that game eventually because I know I want to do it on the channel and we'll, it will be a long time from now, but we'll do it on the channel. Um, but I would not even go near a 9. <laughs> it's not that good. Alright, it's not good as, it's not good as a 9. I don't want to compare it to games that have a 9. And, but they'll just throw out nines and tens everywhere, so I want to be different from them. From them. So, with that being said, guys, we've exceeded our 15 minute time. I that was. A, I think we're gonna aim more around 15 to 20, because uh, trying to aim for 15 is a little hard. But um, so thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, on the screen now will be the reviews playlist. If you want to see all the other reviews, like I said, the first three are the Dark Ages of reviews. So it was Delta and Chapter Two, uh, Security Breach, and Undertale. And Cuphead. Uh, sure. Um, and so those are the Dark Ages, uh, if you want to go watch those. But the newer ones that are like 15, 20 minutes, definitely go check those out if you, if you want to know more about the games. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.